So, uh, hey, Richard, Jane, this is awesome. Uh, great getting a chance to talk to both of you. I'm big fans of both of your work. Uh, you guys are great in the film. Uh, Jane, I'll, I'll start with you, though. Um, I'm sure you've been asked a version of this question, you know, many times already, but being the only cast member that was on stage and now in, in the movie, I was curious as to what do you think, what, was there anything that you feel we were able to gain from the character uh, or, or even anything that we were able, that we lost from the character uh, seeing it transform from the stage to the, the big screen? Mm. Well, um, I don't think anything was lost at all. And uh, in terms of what was gained from stage to film, um, the, the basic woman that I portrayed on stage is the basic woman that I portrayed in the film. I mean, okay. the, uh, while there were some rather subtle script differences in terms of dialogue, basically it was the same. What was different though about the film was the physical reality, radically different than the stage play. And what was also different were the actors that I was working with. And so of sure. course, I was impacted as the character by a new set of actors who were bringing their own um, vision and understanding of who these people were. So the dynamics of the scenes played di very differently between the film and the stage, even though I was portraying the same woman. Got it. Uh, and Richard, um, a lot of actors talk about, you know, it, when they're in a scene, you know, being in the moment, just being present, um, and, and listening and kind of get, you know, getting feedback off of the other actors. I was wondering uh, what that was like in, in your scenes that you had with June Squibb, whose character is kind of not there. Um, and, and there's not a lot of dialogue, obviously, to go off of. Um, but what was it like interacting with, with, with her in those, in those scenes that you had? I'm sorry, I wasn't li listening. What did you say? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, June is well because we knew her and we loved her uh, it was she's easy to love June um, but I don't know for some reason I always felt maybe mom will have a lucid moment here maybe mom maybe she'll she'll notice something we keep asking mom you see that you see the pictures <clears throat> and I think that's normal for uh I don't know if what's normal or what isn't normal, but I mean, it seemed reasonable to me to think maybe she'll turn to me and say, uh, this was a, this is a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's the, you're always hoping that I, I think you talk to them like they, you assume they might understand. I, I mean, I know I did my, both of my parents, um, had, well, no, my father didn't, um, but they both had strokes, but my mom's mm -hmm. brain was really affected by it. And, uh, uh, she was my mom, but she wasn't. But you still, there are moments when you think, oh my gosh, she, it, it's her again. Right. And then they're gone. So I think that's what you're always hoping for. <clears throat> Just like that, I'm out of time already with you guys. Uh, but it was great seeing you. I hope everybody goes and checks this film out. Uh, and again, uh, best to you both and uh, stay safe. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. Bye-bye. Steven, hey, this Tom. is great. Hi, hey, how you doing, man? Uh, great to chat with you. Um, I love the film, the, the the humans. So I know that you adapted it. One of my favorite things about films, though, are the ones that you leave the theater and you're discussing it and you're debating it. And it's kind of open for interpretation. It doesn't, you definitely don't spoon feed the audience. Um, I was wondering, though, your opinion on this. When there's a movie like that, is there one right way to interpret it? Or do you like the idea that people can kind of interpret it in different ways and get different things out of it, even though that might not have been what you intended? Yeah, I, I love the, the an audience being able to bring their own specific history, makeup, maybe even what's going on in their life that day. You know, did they have a good day of work? Um, I, I sort of crave that uh, personal relationship to stories mm -hmm. when I, some of my favorite stories allow a little bit of room for that. And so, yeah, as a storyteller, I definitely, I love being specific and clear when I need an audience to know something. And I'm never ambiguous for the sake of just having people to be confused or, 
but specifically I'd say with um, a story about a family, I do love people leaving the theater, the movie theater and, and not talking to me even about the mechanics of the film, but we'll say, yeah, you know what my mom said to me last week? Or can I tell you about what my dad said? Like the, it prompts <laughs> a discussion about their family. Right. Um, and in some ways I think that's the best compliment because it, I do think stories about families um, it just kind of make that room for you to also process, even if you're doing it unconsciously, because it's not your family, sure. you can kind of think a lot about the ways in which your family is very different and maybe the ways in which um, there are some strange overlaps or uh, of, of the emotional variety, you know? Sure. Um, one, the other thing that I love from a visual perspective of this movie, a lot of adaptations from the stage get kind of knocked that they look like a play, you know, once they make it to the film, like they're kind of boxed in. What I love about a stage play too, is even if a director really wants the audience to hone in, you have the freedom to look at whatever you want. I could look at a mark on the, on the floor. I could look up at the ceiling or the lights or, or one of the set pieces. I, I could look at whatever. I got a lot of that feeling from this movie because I felt like the camera kind of focuses on stuff that isn't really maybe, you know, like there's characters talking in the background and yet you know we're focused on like a feather, you know, uh, yeah. talk about just that, that, that aesthetic choices and some of the visual style in this film that really sets it apart from other uh, stage ad adaptations. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can speak for just, just for myself. I would say that there's like uh I found this really interesting emotional connection about being very close and very far away with the camera. Mm. Um, so when the camera's close, it's almost like, like you said, maybe you're on a, a feather or detail of the apartment and the family is almost abstracted into like glow balls that are like right. you know, toasting, but in, in the distance, um, or sometimes the close-ups are so intense, you're, you know, in Amy Schumer's eyes, right. watching Instagram scroll through her glasses. Uh, and then you're very wide or you're very wide and you creep very slowly into a closer uh, angle, closer shot. Um, what felt right about that? Part of it was like a sense of voyeurism, like entryway into the story, letting people observe the family. Um, and, and something about that felt really truthful and like it captured what the story is actually doing. It's just not an over the shoulder like Beanie Feldstein's moving into an apartment, like romantic right. comedy. Um, so you're sort of trying to just obey the visual uh, logic to um, the connection to emotion. Like there's something about that voyeurism that feels right. Um, and then there's also something about the story that is both really naturalistic and grounded in the reality of this family, this city, this apartment. And that also is kind of um, pondering something a little bigger, or I don't even want to say mysterious, but maybe just like numinous or like something bigger than themselves. And I found that that relationship to both like expanse, claustrophobia, um, you know, a mother who's talking about sending emails to their daughters talking about, you know, PS, we're all electrons. I just, <laughs> I got this really interesting science article. It almost made me feel that kind of, um, sense of largeness like yes this family no one even knows that they're in this dingy space having this meal and right. yet there's something maybe cosmic about it too or something universal and so I just love the way that the camera can kind of lead you to through feeling um to like these story decisions uh and so to me that was my guide and then it was kind of fun to sort of end up the movie and and maybe make some of the observations you're making now without them always being uh too heady or too uh conscious at the time well thank you so much man uh, that, that's fascinating i have several more questions i would love to ask you uh but i hope that everybody goes and sees the humans um thank you for giving thank us you. this and best of luck thank you so much nice to talk to you all right you as well take care i appreciate it take care man